All right, Shalom. This is Brother Atas Mumia, part of GMS South Carolina camp. Uh, now I'm teaching at Fort Mill due to transportation or whatnot. All right. Now I'm by myself because old buddy, the, um, the other brother, well, he he decided not to teach anymore, so he he don't want to come out. So I can't go to Charlotte anymore until further notice. So. I have to teach out here in, in Fort Mill. It ain't really that many places to set up, but I'm gonna just start teaching and whatnot. You know. But I wanna start giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashamal Shah, double honors to the elder Great Millstone, taught me this truth, and Shalom to the Akim out there pushing the truth and sincerity. Alright? Gonna start out with this. Yeah. Which I wasn't surprised because I knew eventually he was going to stop doing it, but yeah, he just stopped. All right, so I'm going to bring out some scriptures about that because the time we're in now, you know, uh, everything we've been talking about, we about to experience. So, you know, a lot of guys that got into it, you know, it was all sweet and stuff when they first came in. You know, it was glorious cursing out the white man and all that, but... Now we about to experience what we've been talking about for these years and you know a lot of guys they wasn't their mind wasn't really into it like that so but it's a judgment if you stop man because the scriptures say which I'm gonna bring them out that you know it ain't me he's he's uh which he didn't even want to come tell me this he had my mom tell me whatever but uh thing is that it's not me that he's quitting on or walking away from. It's not even about me. It's the Lord. So he going to have to deal with the Lord. So let's get scriptures on that. It's a fucking dog over there. All right, this is Luke 9 and 62. It said, And Yehoshua said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Meaning what? If you start putting your hand to the plow to labor, teaching this, teaching this word, out here on the highways and byways where you're supposed to be. Get that real quick. Right. Luke chapter 14, verse 23, it says, And the Lord said unto the servants, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Right? So the Lord said, compel them to come into the house. And you got to be on the highways and byways, teaching the word, all right, to Israel, all right? Either in a small town, on the sidewalk, whatever, this lame-ass small town, or in a major, uh, major city. You got to get out there and push that word, man. So it says, go in, out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled, all right? Uh, so like Luke fourteen twenty one. Cool. Let me take these gloves off. Yeah, that's not that cool. So me... Luke 14, 21, it says, so that servant, so that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, all right, and bring in hither the poor and the marred and the halt and the blind, which that's all, talk, all talking about Israel. Okay, because this was a parable, but the Lord was basically illustrating the commandment was to go out and teach, all right, on the highways and byways or the streets and lanes. All right, so there's no excuse. You know, you get people saying, oh, well, I don't live near a big camp or I don't live in a major city or what now. Well, you know, I experienced both. I was once in a big camp, you know, but now it's just me and the brother that's in Shara. Monotonous like that teaching in South Carolina. We the only camp down the only two people down here in South Carolina teaching For what I know of and then you got the two brothers in North Carolina teaching But once amongst us we had 13 people man 
make it 14 now that either got kicked out, fell out, or uh, just withdraw. They didn't want to do the work anymore, all right? The latest one being this guy named Gabar Moth. That's the light-skinned uh, dude that be in the camp with me, you know? And yeah, well, it was in the camp with me, okay? All right, with the afro. His name is Gabar Moth, okay? And he, he turned his back on the Lord, so the Lord gonna deal with him, man. Thus saith the Lord, because the Lord told him to go out on the highways and byways and teach this word. All right? To prove that the heart and blind and marred is talking about Israel. Was it Isaiah 35? Yeah. No, that's not it. It's a lot. It's Isaiah 61. You know? Isaiah 61 and 1, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God, which is Yahweh, that's, that's the name of the Heavenly Father. All right, Yahweh meaning He to be or He exists or He breathe. Okay, Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father. All right, the Lord power is upon me. So th this is the prophecy speaking about the Lord, which is now speaking about His, uh, his men. All right, the prophets that were sent out to teach the word on the highways and byways. Upon me, because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Okay, the good tidings is the gospel. All right, the word uh, gospel means good news. And when you break it down back in the etymology, it means good spell or good tidings or good news. So that's only talking about Israel. Let me get some precepts on that. This is, uh, yeah, I'm going to be out here for a while, too, you know, so it's whatever. That dog can bark until the fucking head fall off, but I ain't going to stop. All right, this is uh, Nahum 1 and 15. It says, Behold, upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feasts, perform thy vows. For the wicked shall no more pass through thee, he is utterly cut off. That's right. So the, it says, Behold upon the mountains, all right, which the mountains represent major governments, all right, because this word is being preached all around the world. That's one of the signs of the time, okay? All right, all around the world. So it says, Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, preaching the gospel, that publisheth peace. All right, peace to who? Peace to Israel. Which the Israelites are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American descent on your father's side. You are the true biblical Israelite. So the gospel is for you. Okay? Get another one. And I go back to where I was. This is um Isaiah 40. Let's get cold. All right. Isaiah 40 and 1, it says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, say of your power. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. Meaning her appointed time. What, what's uh, Israel's appointed time? That we would be in captivity under these filthy ass heathens, mainly the so-called white man and these other nations for a period of time. Okay? But the gospel, the good news, which is the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, which is only given to the Israelites, all right, and promised to them, all right, when the Lord came on the scene, that was the beginning of the last days for these heathens to be in power, all right? So that's why the Lord sent us out to come preach the word, because this is the last captivity. Once this place get destroyed and all these filthy ass heathens burn up and you wicked two third ass niggas, you die in here too, okay? All right, and all you tuck your hand off the plow, you're going to die out here in America, man. You're going to die wherever you uh, was teaching that, man. All right, and the Lord's got m many forms of judgment for you. And that's the time we're approaching, the time of judgment, man. Okay? All right? Fucking dog, man. All right, so it says, speak ye comfortably unto my people. The Lord's people is the nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos.